Welcome to Bullet Point Nursing. My name is Dr. Goldstein. Let's get started. Today we are looking at pain assessment, and this continues on our discussion about the different vital signs assessment. Pain is considered often as one of the vital signs. So you will perform as a nurse a pain assessment anytime a patient complains of pain. You will also do a complete reassessment after any change in the patient's condition for better or worse, and after any pain intervention that you provide, such as medications or non-pharmacological interventions. Consider the onset of any pain intervention you do, such as if you're giving a Tylenol by mouth versus giving some IV morphine, to know when would be appropriate to reassess your patient to determine if your intervention helped. There are a number of different mnemonics to use to assess for pain. The one we're gonna use is the OPQRST, and this is one of the most popular mnemonics used for pain assessment. We begin with O, which is for onset. And the question here to ask is what were you doing when the pain started? For example, was, was the patient shoveling snow when they began to feel chest pain? That would be significant. The next thing we are going to ask is P, which is for provoking or palliative factors. And over here we're asking, does anything make the pain better or worse? For example, if the patient's having a GI issue, does eating make the pain better? Or if the patient's having a musculoskeletal issue, does rest or stretching or something like that make the pain better? On the flip side, if someone has like an ankle pain, what makes it worse? Putting pressure on it or moving it a certain direction or anything like that. Quality is what does the pain feel like? Now we wanna let the patient guide the discussion. You ask them what it feels like and it's best to let them tell you in their own words. You may need to prompt them with certain words and descriptors such as stabbing pain or sharp pain, dull pain, et cetera. Next we have radiating. And this is asking, does the pain extend anywhere else? You should ask both, does this pain extend anywhere else? And do you have any pain anywhere else? This will assess if the patient has any referred pain anywhere else and certain issues such as gallbladder can have referred pain. Severity, this one you ask on a scale from zero to 10, what is your pain? Zero would be no pain at all and 10 would be the worst pain ever. And finally, time, when did this pain begin? Did this just start five minutes ago? Have you had this pain all night? Is this something you've had since you were 12 years old? A few additional questions to ask when assessing a patient for pain. Have you ever had this pain before? This patient may have had this pain before and they may know exactly what it is and what the provider is going to do for it. So this is a really good question to ask. Another question that's important is, have you taken anything for this pain? Have they taken any over the counter? Did they take a Norco prescription that expired six years ago, but they always kept it in the medicine cabinet, things like that. And then what do you think the pain is? Prior to patients presenting to the healthcare system, they very often have Googled their symptoms. They may have actually found the correct answer. So ask them, do you know what you think is going on? And they may tell you, yes, I looked it up and I think it's this based on X, Y, Z. And they may very well be right and they may be wrong, but it can give you more information. And then a few more notes. Pediatrics have a modified pain scale that you may be familiar with. It's called a Wong-Baker Faces Pain Scale. And this is the chart with the different faces on it where you ask the child to point to the way they feel. Another mnemonic, we used OPQRST, but another one that is commonly taught is old carts. Pain is what the patient states it is. It is not up to us to judge or add our own filter to what they state their pain is. And finally, know your non-pharmacological interventions for pain. These can often be implemented right away. They can be implemented without a doctor's order and they can be implemented with or without the additional use of medications for pain. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.